science mentoring session. So here's where we sit down with our team. We help engage and empower people to understand compliance and how to improve their business. So this morning's session is all going to be about what we call consultation and participation. And can I say to me, this is one of the most important things in the business that we want to grow. Because where, where workers are engaged, they know that they're valued, they know that their opinion is appreciated, that there is an open forum and trust that there is safety within the relationships to be able to speak openly and frankly about what they feel is going on within the business. Where people are engaged, where they know that there is a vision and they are part of that journey, people engage. And what that does is it changes their attitudes and behaviors with regards to the business. So if you didn't feel as though you were valued, you wouldn't contribute. The more you feel as though you're valued and we want your opinion and we want your ideas in the spaces within the business, the more engaged you're going to get, the more you feel part of the family or part of the business. All of those things contribute to an effective culture within the organization. So consultation and participation is a very important thing to us. Okay, so let's go through some of the requirements. So we're using some of the requirements from ISO 45000 clause 5.4, which focuses on consultation and participation of the workforce. So the standard says that we need to create mechanisms, time, training, and resources for consultation and participation. So we have management reviews, we have daily meetings, uh, we have safety committee meetings, we have a whole load of forums which create mechanisms and time, and we're doing some training with you guys now to help you understand how you can better add value be engaged and be part of the business around some of these requirements okay so also for consultation and participation to be effective within a business there needs to be timely access to clear and understandable information if I want your opinion on a relatively complex issue it's within my best interest and your best interest to provide you with information let's say I wanted him I wanted your guys opinion on the financial statements of the business do you guys know how to read a trial balance financial trial balance, etc. So if I want your opinion on something, it's within all of our best interest for me to sit down and train you to provide you with the information so that you can go away, read it, and then come back and give your opinion on what you think. So that is an essential part to, to effective consultation and participation is providing information because otherwise what happens in a lot of organizations where consultation and participation is, is window dressing as such, is they provide you with information, they give you five minutes to understand it. Do you think you're going to be able to provide a value adding input? So that's a very important thing. Timely access to clear and understandable information along with training around what we're looking for. Also very important, we need to determine and remove barriers. So what do you think are some of the barriers to effective consultation and participation? Communication is key. Steph? Mm, time. Time. So yeah, I want your opinion now, and then you're in a rush. So there's a whole lot of barriers. What, are, what about language? What happens if we didn't speak the same language? Do you think that's a barrier? Yes, it is. So language, time, the way that we communicate. What about personality time? So I don't, I don't have a problem standing up in front of a camera and talking to people, but let's say we're in a meeting. Some people are quite shy. And if you're shy, it doesn't mean that you don't have great opinions. It just maybe sometimes means that you don't have the courage to bring those ideas forth. So what we need to do as a business is we need to determine, I want all of your guys' opinion. It's important to us because for us to go forward collectively as a business and improve, I need your ideas. So we need to identify barriers to shy people, possibly suggestion schemes. They can send an email where they don't necessarily want to talk publicly. There's a whole load of different ways that we can identify barriers and remove them to ensure that that consultation and participation is, is effective. So we're not going to be able to achieve any of these inputs if we don't do this. Timely access to clear information, training, participation, engagement, and removing barriers. So the first thing I wanted to have a look at this morning is consultation. Now I wanted to start off by explaining what consultation is, because there is a difference between consultation and participation by virtue of the definition. Consultation means I'm asking your opinion as part of the decision-making process. I'm asking your opinion, but I'm going to make the final decision. So that is consultation. So guys, um, we want to develop a new training course. 
So I want you guys to give me ideas. You might give me 10 different ideas each. I might select two of them and use them. But I've asked your opinion as part of my decision-making process. Okay? So you have been consulted. So these are some of the areas that we would like to consult with the organization on. So I want you guys to help us to understand what the needs and expectations of interested and affected parties are. So our, our interested and affected parties would be, what about the community? What about the workforce? What about our neighbors? What about the landlord, etc.? Those are some of the people that are interested in our business. We need you guys. I don't know necessarily what's going on in the community. I need you guys to help me to understand some of those issues. So this is an essential part. Also, the, the health and safety policy. So we've just done that culture assessment and I'm very, very grateful for the feedback. But some of the feedback that came back asked for greater levels of communication and particularly around this particular issue. So in establishing the OSH policy, we've got a SHEC policy, which is on the wall. All of you guys have seen it over the past week. All of you guys have signed it off. What we want going forward is a greater level of consultation around it to look at it and say, hey, Nick, I think we can add some stuff in there. That's where we can improve the content of our policy. Or, more importantly, Nick, you've said that in the policy. I don't think we're living up to it because we make commitments in that policy. Okay, I, I want your opinions on roles, responsibilities, and authorities. How I can more clearly articulate roles and responsibilities and authorities team so that you know clearly we always work better when we have clearly defined roles and responsibilities there can be so obviously flexibility within that but again I want your guys opinions on how we can clarify that more and engage and discharge those roles and responsibilities also how we fulfill legal and other requirements is important again I'm, I'm here in the office I'm also traveling I'm not here every single day so I want your guys' opinion. So you guys are the first aider, the safety rep. Um, you guys are going to be doing various different inspections within the work area. I'd like your recommendations on how we can continue to make the workplace safe. So through those inspections, etc., you guys are going to make recommendations to us on what we can do to improve. That's part of that fulfillment of legal and other requirements. Okay, so we've got check objectives, we've got safety, health, environmental and quality objectives. We speak about how we're going to reduce risks, our training, how we're going to improve the business as well. That's in the induction. It's also in our management review presentation. You guys, when you've got a little bit more time, I'd like you to have a look at that and see where you think we could add, add extra objectives or what we could do to ensure that we deliver on those objectives as well. You guys are invited to give us your opinion there. Now, this is something that is relatively new to the standard that a lot of businesses don't focus on. But it, if you realize how to discharge that, it, it becomes quite good. So controls around procurement and contractors. So let's say I'm off in Cape Town. I'm busy consulting down there. We've got a contractor who comes in to maintain the air conditioners. Do you think I'm going to be aware of the fact that the person's working unsafely? No, because you guys are here. So again, I need your opinion on any of the contractors, any of the suppliers that we work with. Spare, you regularly engage with the suppliers, you do the supplier reviews. I want your opinion on whether they are good contractors and suppliers or not. They're not delivering on time, their quality is, is bad, or they're working on safety. We need your input around those particular issues. Okay? And then also what to monitor and measure. Remember that we set objectives, we want to move forward as a business and we want to improve. I want your opinion on in order for us to achieve our targets, our business improvement, our compliance, maintaining our certification, I need your guys' opinion on what and when we can monitor and measure. So you guys are doing safety rep inspections, you're doing housekeeping inspections, you're checking around the office, you're participating in the business and saying, Nick, I think for us to improve the business, we need to check on that more regularly. Okay, the audit program as well. So SPARE is our, now our trained internal auditor. And part of that is that we have an audit program which speaks about the schedule, where we audit, how we audit, etc. So I'm also looking for input from you guys on the frequency of audits. Now remember, we want to audit higher risk activities more regularly. So the consulting, we might audit admin once every six months, the consulting will audit every three months. But again, I want your opinion on how we can best meet that. And also, most importantly to the business is how we can continually improve. So we want to go from where we are now to a progressive track of improving the business. 
That comes from logging improvements, investigating the improvements, finding the root or contributing factors. You guys will be involved in the incident investigation process, helping us to identify root causes, helping us to set corrective action. Those are some of the contributing parts of continually improving the business. Improving our expenses, improving our turnover, making sure that the work environment is safe, making sure that we don't pollute and that we are managing our carbon impact and offsetting carbon, which I'll speak to you guys about this morning. So again, consultation, I want your opinion as part of our decision-making process on these particular issues. They're important to us. And we're going to continue to train you and educate you and engage with you on these issues because I want your opinion to help us collectively as a business move forward. Okay, so what about participation? Now, participation is different from consultation. Remember, consultation is I want your opinion as part of our decision making process. Participation is different, it means that you are actively involved in the decision making process. Okay? You have a vote, in other words. Okay. Here, you, you give an opinion, but you may not necessarily have a vote. Here, you're actively involved in the decision-making process. Okay. So, we want you to be actively involved in us determining how to consult and participate. So, whether you guys want a weekly meeting or a daily meeting or a monthly meeting to chat through these issues and make recommendations, I want you to be involved in that decision-making process. If you say, Nick, we want a weekly meeting to discuss these issues, then let's, let's negotiate around that. Also, all of you guys are actively involved in identifying hazards, risks, and opportunities. So if you see anything that is unsafe within the workplace or any opportunities where we can improve the performance of our business, you're part of that decision-making process. Also, once you've identified hazards, risks, what actions we can do to eliminate that. Let's say you're seeing a tripping hazard or a slipping hazard or there's something unsafe. We want you to identify those issues and help us to determine how to eliminate those hazards. Okay? Also, a big thing for you guys, as part of you guys have all got your um, individual performance um, um, objectives, we want you guys to help us to determine what training you need you're part of the decision-making process and what training you need and how we should evaluate that training. So many of you guys are signed on to our learning management system. You're doing training. You're going to do on-the-job training with us. But we also want you to be involved in how we evaluate that training. So yes, there's either practical assessments, might be observations, etc. But you're part of that decision-making process. Also, how to communicate, both internally and externally of the business. What's the best way? So... If we need to chat with each other, you guys can say, hey, Nick, we really need a, a Microsoft Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting so that we can all see each other face-to-face -face rather than the phone call. How we communicate with each other, you know, I want you guys to be part of that decision-making process. Also, determine the controls and the implementation. So when we identify hazards, risks, and opportunities, how to eliminate them or how to improve on those opportunities. We identify the hazards, how can we eliminate them, and also what if we can't eliminate, what are the extra controls that we can implement to make sure that everybody is safe? Okay, you guys will also be involved in, you've had incident investigation training, you're going to undergo that on the LMS soon, as will Paul. We want your guys' participation in logging improvements, logging accidents, performing the investigation, identifying what the root or contributing factors are, helping us to set corrective action, being involved in executing the corrective action and then reviewing the effectiveness. So guys, can you see how consultation and participation is key to engagement? When people understand that their opinions are valued, where they're engaged within the business, where they're involved in the day-to-day -day activities and they understand that they are valued, there's a good level of trust between people where they feel as though they can speak openly and give opinions on some of these quite complex and very important issues. They are all key to building an effective culture within the workplace. Are there any questions? Okay, so thanks very much for today's daily coaching moment.